Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're back on the updates 1.79 dev server and there is a new map which is in the rotation at least. Uh, this map, as you can see, is called Wallonia and what it is, is the three Ardennes maps uh, combined. Now we already had this with Volokolamsk. Uh, what they did with Volokolamsk is they took all three of the Oops, all three of the large maps and put them together in... That's interesting. My grenade's bugged out. Anyway, uh, they, they took uh, Volokolamsk and it was, when it started, a very large map and then they cornered it off into smaller maps. And then what they did with that is then expanded it into the surroundings around Volokolamsk. Uh, so this isn't uh, just a map which uh, they've expanded. This is, this map was made and then it was cornered up into three separate maps. And to be honest, we only see one or two in the rotation uh, whenever at a time. The main one that we see is this area here, which you may recognize. The spawn points are normally here in this little houses and here in this little house. Then you have the B one which is another map, and then you have a C1, which is another map. The two that you normally see is the one around A, and the other one around B. Around C, uh, I don't think I've ever actually seen in a PvP realistic, um, you know, uh, game. So what is the issues uh, with a map like Wallonia? Well, when we, have, when we had a chat earlier about the uh, Italy map, what is nice about it is it spawns, are pretty secluded. There are areas where you can uh, pretty much screw over the spawns and be able to sit there and spawn camp, but it's hard to go around them. You can't go to the north across the river, you can't go by the sea because, well, the sea's in the way, so you have to go through the town in order to be able to attack either spawn. Now, when we look at this map, is that the case? Well, let's look at the two spawns. All you have to do is go from here grab the edge of the map, go around, spawn camp this one. Or, if you want to go from the other side, do exactly the same thing. Don't play the objective at all, don't do anything, but you're able to spawn camp and get some quick kills, get some research for yourself and all that wonderful stuff. What are a lot of players going to do? They're going to do exactly this. <clears throat> and that's incredibly annoying, but it's exactly what we see from the Ardennes map, which is a hell of a lot smaller than the one around here. What people do is they go whoop, and hit the spawn, or they go whoop and hit the spawn. The majority, or at least the the uh, you know average amount of people, attack the town. But the people who just want to spawn camp, which is generally half the team, and as you go up in tiers, it gets more and more of the team. They just go straight around. And on a map like this, it is so easy to do. You can just go around the whole map because there are these rolling hills everywhere. So you can just keep going in cover and hoping that nobody sees you. <clears throat> now also there seems to be an issue which I haven't completely confirmed, but when I look at the distance of this um, spawn point to A, B, and C, and compare it to the one on the red side, or the southern uh, west side, the southern west side one seems to be closer. But this could be, uh, this could be sorted out by the fact that there are more hills on the 5 and 3 and 7 line than there are on the 9 and 11 line, so it's... Uh, a flatter so acceleration is going to matter a little bit more but yeah if you don't want to fight the map you can just go straight around and nobody's going to see you it is flat field so all it takes is one person to stop you but a lot of the time when what people will do is not do that and uh, meta will form around people flanking so people will set up to uh, stop the flankers and then if the flankers win then you've lost the match and if you win then the uh, then you're sat in a position where you still haven't really done anything and none of the zones have captured. So I'm not really going to go around, eh? You've been here before many times, being the main Ardennes map. And since this map is very large, my guess is it's for top tiers. Uh, this is not going to be a map which is designed for lower tiers because it's just way too big. I mean, I've only gone across a very small part of it in the Type 90 going 50 kilometers an hour. So can you imagine being in French tanks? On uh, like rank one in this, no, you can't because it would be ridiculous. But yeah, uh, the fighting in this little town has always been incredibly fun on the Ardennes. Uh, the main issue has always been the problems surrounding it, where it's very easy to encapsulate this town. There are many ways in and out, so you can't really cover anywhere. 
and you will just get flanked all the time on this. Now times that by, well actually no, maybe a hot, maybe quarter that and that's what's going to happen. So it's going to end up where a few key positions instead of maybe 10 or you know 11 key decisions is going to make a huge difference today. Kind of like how it does on the uh, south side of Volokolamsk in the middle zone. We go to the center point. Uh, now I just want to clarify that either side of all of these points, uh, B and C, uh, not really A in this case, there is absolutely no cover coming into it either side and there is perfect defensible positions in all of these areas to be able to cover these zones from each of the spawns. So if you win the initial battle, you will not lose this match. First of all, it will take way too long for the enemy to actually get here uh, if they spawn back in again and second of all, you have such great defensible positions. This is one of those positions around B. You can see everything. They can't see anything. So what you can just do is wait for them to pop over one of the hills, take a shot, and then move back. Just do that over and over again. You can do that over here. You can also do it on the other side. You can also use the buildings for cover. The defender's advantage around B is astronomical. And uh, it's something that I recognized a very long time ago on this map. And... To see it going to be exaggerated in this way is a little bit worrying. So the standard points around here is nice. Uh, you have some houses for cover, so the 50 meter fighting range is going to be great, but it's going to be whoever pulls the trigger first, uh, just like usual. Unless you're in something like um, which has a little bit of armor behind it, but let's not joke. There isn't a lot of armor at high tier. There's only a few places where you can't uh, penetrate specific tanks. But anyway, uh, we go from B to C, as you can see we're going up an incline, and this is also an issue, because if there is an incline that means there's a hill somewhere, and when there's a hill somewhere, people can sit on said hill and spawn camp. Let's say you're the red team, and you've taken C, right? You've taken C, there's nothing left, you want to push either B, or you're going to look at the spawn. I wonder what I'm going to do. <sighs> Now, oh, some reason I have glass in my hand, and that is less painful than the map design which is going on here. I don't understand how this is going to work in an effective way. The only way that this works as a map is if areas like this are either slightly flattened out or they're massively increased in height. And for me, you have to massively increase them in height in order for them to even be uh, thought about being useful. Covering ma large swathes of land with one tank is something that's incredibly important to do and something that you can easily do with uh, a place like this. And also you can't be seen. So the 3D view, we see into the enemy spawn, we see anything which is trying to attack B or even A, even though it's miles away you'll still be able to see silhouettes and there's nothing they can do about it unless they flank to the right. But guess what? You can also see to the right from this position. So the only way that they get to you is if they're like here when you take C, which is completely possible. But if you're a good player, you'll make sure that there's nobody over there near those rolling hills. Bonkers, innit? Anyway, uh, this, is the, this is the issue with rolling hills in general. Uh, sometimes you can have good maps like Maginot where the rolling hills are designed kind of like trenches or waves so they are used to push up on a map and uh, fight at specific choke points. If the rolling hills are too large then what you end up with is hills and also areas where people can set, uh, sit on said hills and use their gun depression and annihilate you and that's what's going to happen on this map. Each zone is surrounded by a massive open space. So if you decide not to flank, if you decide not to go around here, if you decide not to go around here, which I'm sure a lot of the players are going to do, or at least at the start they will, until they figure out that they can just barrel down the center, uh, let's say you go to one of these zones, you better have a quick vehicle. Otherwise, you are going to lose, because they're going to have all the defensive advantages. Uh, the Most of the zones are in a dip, as you can see. And because they're in a dip then they can just sit in their dip and wait for you to come and attack them and you'll lose because they're in a defensive position, they're in a defensive posture so they have to cock up in order for you to win. 
Remember, War Thunder, at the end of the day, is a game which favours defensive playstyles, even though the majority of people don't like doing it. It is something that definitely happens. Now, look at C. C is the key point. The reason for this is the elevation of the landscape. As I've already demonstrated from C, on both sides by the way, on this side as well, you can use it to look over the entire map and see what's going on. A top tier with these rounds which go 1650 meters uh, per second, it's going to be a shooting gallery for whoever takes these points. Now the only issue uh, with um, this area over here is that you can't see north of A, but if you take and see, you can lock down B incredibly easily from the sniper position, send one guy in to take it, and then you just have to wait for the enemy team to come in, and you just annihilate them one by one. There's nothing they can do. The snowball effect is something that happens a lot in War Thunder. It is, uh, if you don't know what the snowball effect is, it's um, when somebody gets a slight advantage, it increases in advantage and increases and increases and increases until it's absolutely huge aka the snowball effect. This map is a perfect example of something like that, because once you get a small incremental advantage, whether it's a B or C, or even A at some points, you can turn that into a win very quickly by just setting up defensively and waiting for people to come in to attack you. Which is a real shame, uh, there is no real counterplay on this map, because in order to counterplay you have to go across these huge swathes of random landscape which just seem to have been put here for no real apparent reason. So to attack anything you have to attack it from an open plane. I want to really drive home this point. Have you ever heard of the Battle of the Somme? Have you ever heard of the many battles in World War I? One of the biggest issues with the tactics used in World War I was the fact that the soldiers was seen as uh, something that could be expendable, meaning that sending waves upon waves upon waves at an enemy and all of them dying was completely fine as long as you took a slight advantage. Well, in War Thunder, you have the same scenario, apart from your soldiers are not expendable. You do not have enough resources to be able to keep battering down this wall, which is created from around about here to this hill up here. So once you take C, You've taken B, or at least you should take B, because C has the advantage over B, you annihilate everything at B, you take both points, and then on top of that, you are just sitting pretty. Like you can just sit there the whole game, and wait for the enemy to just keep crashing people from these rolling hills into C and into B. And if they try and go around, if they try and go all of the way around the map like this, you may not see them, but it's going to take them 10 minutes. And by that point, you've already won the match, and you've nailed the rest of their team. Patience is going to be key if you want to counterattack in this map, and guess what? The majority of War Thunder players do not have patience uh, in any sense. So, that's not going to work. It's a map which is already flawed from the start, just like the normal Arden map is. And so far, out of the three maps we've had, it's the only one that I've been incredibly unhappy with. The other two I'm very happy with, but this one, this one is doomed from the start, and I can already see it. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.